All right, welcome back to video three in this rotational motion series. Okay, so kind of continuing on with our rotational motion thing, let's just go straight to this problem. Uh, it says the tub of a washer, so a clothes washer, goes into its spin-dry cycle, and starting from rest, we should know all these words, reaching an angular speed of five revs per second, so that's going to be our first thing we have to correct is that revs per second, and it's in 12 seconds. And then it says at this point, the person doing the laundry opens the lid, a safety switch turns off the washer, the tub slows to rest in 10 seconds. Through how many revolutions does the tub turn during this 22 second interval? Assume constant angular acceleration while it's starting and stopping. If you're wondering why this assume constant angular acceleration blurb is in here that tells us we can use rotational kinematics to work this problem if we need to is all it boils down to now this problem is a two-part problem and we've seen problems like this before in terms of doing stuff and i'm going to work it out just like if you remember back when I was teaching you linear problems, when I was teaching you linear problems, I would have you literally do this. Do a little graphic organizer, and in a linear problem, I would have you go, what's V sub 0, what's V, what is A, what is X, and what is T. You can do the same graphic organizer with these problems. Now, the only thing that I'm going to kind of do different is obviously is we're not looking at V sub 0 and X and T and all these things. So in terms of working this problem, what I'm going to do is this. We've got, we've got this. I'm going to still do my graphic. I know this thing's not moving in a straight line, but it helps me work it. I've got an initial angular velocity. It says it started from rest of 0 rads per second. And then it says it reaches an angular speed of 5 revs per second. I'm going to go ahead and do something. 5 revs per second. And if you've forgotten this, I'm going to go down here. 5 revs. I'm going to go ahead and convert this to radians. So times, there's 2 pi radians per 1 rev. So that's 10 pi, but I would really kind of like this in terms of normal units. So pi is 3.281, so this is 32.8 rads per second. So I know that my final angular velocity is 32.8 rads per second. So I remember when I'm working these problems, I get everything into rads per second. Now, so here's the deal. With a two-part problem, and here, I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, alpha, theta, and T. And we do know for this first part that it said 12 seconds. So we've got that. But then it says somebody opens the lid. And so this is what makes this a two-part problem. So a two-part problem. And if you remember, what makes a two-part problem unique is that the final velocity for part one becomes your initial velocity for part two. And it says they open the lid and the thing goes to rest, so that means my final angular velocity for part two is zero rads per second. And then it says, the only other thing it tells us, theta, alpha, theta, T, the only other thing that it tells us is that it what takes 10 seconds for part two now somebody might be tempted to try and combine all this together what makes this two parts unique is that the angular acceleration for part one and the angular acceleration for part two are different so we can't combine we have to work each part independently so as we work this problem out what we're going to have is a angular displacement for part one and then angular displacement for part two and then we'll have to combine these two angular displacements now we could we could easily do this problem two ways 
Uh, one way we could do this problem, we could use our angular acceleration equation. And if you take a look, it would be very easy for us to find angular acceleration for both part one and part two. And then use that to find angular position or angular displacement. I'm going to go a different route. Uh, it's actually the easiest way to work this problem. And usually whenever I'm given initial and final velocities, and that's always remembering that if you want to find average velocity, a very easy thing is just to do what? Add them up, divide by two. So in the case of this problem, we could very easily take a look at each part. What is zero plus 32.8? Well, 0 plus 32.8 is 32.8. Divide that by 2, and you've got 16.4. So I know that the average angular velocity for part 1 is 16.4 rads per second. Wait a minute. What's the angular average angular velocity for part 2? Wait a minute. It's still the average of 32.8 and 0, so that means you've got the same average angular velocity for both parts. What's the only thing that's different? Oh, it's 12 seconds and 10 seconds. So all we've got to do is essentially do this. This is the only equation that we're going to use. It's basically your distance over time equivalent for angular acceleration. So for part one, I know that theta over t, and I actually meant to plug in numbers there, and I did not do it, so let's do something. I know that for part one, this would be what? Over 12 seconds, and that is equal to 16.4. So that means my angular acceleration for the first part is what? 16.4 times 12. So I've got 196.8 radians of displacement for part one. And for part two, it's the same average angular velocity. So my theta for that part, I think we can handle that with our calculator. 10 times 16.4 is 164 radians. So what is the theta? Let's write like this as soon as my thing stops misbehaving. What is my theta total? for this. Well, we'll just get the calculator back out. All we need to do is add 168. We've got 364.8. Now, here's the thing. This is radians, and the problem asks, how many revolutions did it make? Well, all you got to do is remember, here, let's give ourselves a little bit more room. I'm going to do it with my engineering bars, or however you want to call it. And all we've got to do is remember that there are 2 pi radians per 1 revolution. So all we have to do is take that last answer, divide it by 2 pi, and there we go, 58 revolutions. And so there is our final answer. And again, we could have worked the problem a different way. We could have found our angular accelerations for each part, but we'd still have had to find theta for part one, theta for part two, and combine. Anyway, this is a good little simple problem. Kind of gets going a little further.